minute test drive. We are in Southern California, around San Diego, Del Mar area. We're out here to drive the brand new 2019 Toyota Avalon. We've driven both the hybrid and the V6 gas model. Uh, we're joined by Pepe Forte, who's our drive partner, and uh, we've enjoyed our time out here and getting away from the snow of the uh, of, of Detroit here in uh, early April. But um, you don't care about that. You want to you care about what's this car like? Is it worth your time? That's what we find out on this episode of RumbleStrip.net and 10 minute test drive. So this is the fourth generation of Toyota Avalon. They call it their flagship vehicle. Well, their flagship sedan anyways. Uh, I think they have other vehicles that are probably more flagship status, but according to them in, in their briefing this morning, this is the vehicle they've put the most technology and effort into. And um, if you want to think about what as a Toyota brand they're thinking about and doing about, they say, look at what we're doing here. Okay, fair enough. So. This is an interesting car to bring out, and Pepe and I were talking about this earlier, and you chime in here uh, as well. Sedans, especially kind of full-size sedans, not so much anymore. Everyone's moving to crossovers. It's practically a segment that is fed in a way, so it's a really risky move for the company to put exactly a car like this in the market, especially when last year, or two years ago, last year, they had the brand new Camry. So the first thing that it crossed my mind is that the car was going to be a kind of glorified uh, Camry. It's not. Yes. It's no. a totally different vehicle, totally pre-designed vehicle. Uh, it has its own nature, so that's a good thing. Anyways, it's a risky uh, move for the company since uh, you can have uh, the best of a Camry, uh, a top-of-the-line Camry, and immediately after that, you can jump into the Lexus uh, land. Mm -hmm. And so this vehicle could be it's a very risky operation for the company, uh, to put this vehicle in the market because of that. It could be overlapping uh, prices, yep. overlapping amenities, you know, that mm -hmm. kind of thing. But uh, I think it's going to be successful. If there's, I think there's just enough differentiation between this and a Camry in that a little more leg room in the back, a little, I think it's a little wider in the hips and the shoulder area here, a little nicer nicer appoint, appointments in here. Uh, we've driven a, a touring trim earlier that was really nice with some uh, quilted leather and uh, Yamaha wood trim. So, they, like same same wood supposedly that they use in yeah. Yamaha pianos and stuff like that. But um, it's a very comfortable car. It's a very uh, competent car. Um, but to succeed, it's not going to have to do too much work because when you think about what it's going up against, Buick LaCrosse. It's an okay car. I, no no issues with it. It's fine. The Chrysler 300. Well, it's that's a 20 year old chassis and uh, Chevy Impala. Chevy Impala, but that's going away. That's being discontinued. And uh, Nissan Maxima, eh, which is a good car. But um, yeah, it's kind of interesting. And, and the other thing to think about is uh, they mentioned that they only sold 32,000 Avalons last year. But even if they get a pretty decent bump, 50,000, that's not a lot of cars to sell in a, yeah. for a segment, especially when you're going to sell 400,000 RAV4s. <laughs> so. Well, they're expecting, you know, a kind of controlled uh, sales. You know? Sure. At one point. Yep. So I think they're going to make it, frankly. Yeah. yeah. They're going to make it. Okay. Um, let's talk about the driving dynamics. We've driven both the hybrid and a couple different versions of the V6. Uh, Would you chime in on what your thoughts are between the two? You know, I was impressed. I was expecting uh, to have a sluggish or slower car when we were driving the, the, uh, the hybrid. Mm -hmm. I was impressed it wasn't that way. It wasn't that way. Of course, the, the gas version is a little more dynamic. It's more vivid in the way it works, you know. Uh, but I was really impressed that uh, taking, you know, in consideration that normally hybrid vehicles are slower when they start, things like that. The car was good, you know. I was impressed, uh, really, uh, about uh, the, how how the the hybrid behaves, especially on the open road. Yeah, um, had a nice heft to it. Uh, it felt substantial. This, I think, feels a little more substantial, but that's yes. a, again, that's a perception thing, right? Um, the hybrid was good, as you say, a lot of good low-end torque off of it, so I think it got away from the stoplights well. And then the other really interesting thing is uh, rated at uh, 42 city, 44 highway and 44 yep. combined. Yep, exactly. And just in some kind of mixed driving, we saw 46, just 
not trying, just driving it normally. So uh, that's fairly impressive. Um, the other interesting thing is on the base trim, there's going to be three levels where you can get hybrid and four levels of gas. Uh, it's a $1,000 premium on the middle and top tier and a $1,500 premium on the bottom tier for the hybrid. So you can have your luxury and good gas mileage for not too much of a premium. So I think that's, that's pretty fair. Uh, this V6, 300 horsepower, that's a really good number. Uh, we were talking in Pepe's video, it's like uh, it's like just the perfect amount of power. This thing's got enough enough yeah. juice with the V6, you're never going to have to worry about it, but um, it's still, it's, uh, let's see if I can pull the numbers up. I had 22 city, uh, 30, or I think 30, a little over 30 on the highway, and 34, that, yeah. 34 highway, and then 26 combined, six in my head. So, you know, fair numbers for a full-size V6 and they didn't give they didn't state a, uh, a weight on this but I'm gonna guess it's probably about 3,700 pounds 3,800 pounds that feels about All right we can annotate it here for you to uh, to give you the exact number some other tech features in here uh, nine inch touchscreen they're rolling out Apple CarPlay into this thankfully um, they have their Intune system. They also have some apps so that you can use like Apple Watch or on your phone for remote start, uh, remote location, uh, locking the doors, and there was one other feature you could do with it, but I mean that's cool that they're rolling that out. Uh, on the top tier trim you can get a 10 inch heads up display which um, is really nice except for the fact that if you wear polarized sunglasses you're not going to see it uh, it's unfortunate but that's pretty much standard with every heads-up display uh, the hybrid uh, the battery has been moved out underneath the second row yep. instead of being in the uh, trunk right and, and I think that's a good that's an excellent point to make so this is off of the TNGA platform so think of TNGA to Volkswagen like MQB is to Volkswagen right they can build a ton of different stuff off of it uh, but the bones of the chassis are really good. So no matter what you build off of it, it's going to feel good. So originally off the Prius, and then uh, we've seen the it. CHR. CHR, and uh, the, now the Camry, yeah. and now this. Each of these vehicles has some pretty good driving dynamics. So um, fully independent susp suspension. You got McPherson struts in the back and uh, independent out the back. And then on, I wish I could remember which trim level it is, but... They're gonna even have like a sway bars that adjust or something like that. I can't, sorry, I, I really should know, but you, they throw like all this information at you, sometimes a little hard to process. Um, and electronic variable suspension that can adjust 650 times every 20 nanoseconds, I think. Um, again, we can annotate that as well. Uh, Pepe materials, good, not great? I think it's good, I think it's good. I love the, this uh, piano look with the Yamaha wood uh, we have right here a kind of imitation of a fiber mm -hmm. I don't know so we have a mix between uh, soft materials and semi soft materials but besides that the design is, is very you know it's, it's, it's beautiful I think it's a it's better and compared to the Camry the Camry is a, the, the car looks more upscale that's what it is, yeah, you know, yeah. Compared to the Camry, so this is another point that separates visually uh, the Avalon from the Camry because you know what we want to make sure and clear uh, to the people, the audience are following us or you now, is that this is not exactly a better version of a Camry. It's a totally different vehicle, totally redesigned it, the, the drawing and everything. Uh -huh. By the way, uh, the vehicle is 100% American. Yes. So of course, Japan approved the idea. But it was designed in the culture studio it was conceived right here in america it was uh, drawn right here in america mm -hmm. and uh, the vehicle is totally and, and made on the kentucky factory yep so this is a totally american uh, toyota and it, it really does cater to the to the american audience although they did say they do export these to the middle east and to south korea from from kentucky as under well the same under yep. the same name avalon yep south korea yes exactly I, I will say, compared to the Camry, you made a really good point too. Um, compared to the Camry, the interior feels much more cohesive. The the Camry felt a little, kind of like here's some ideas and we throw it together. This this has a little more cohesive, um, horizontal and vertical kind of flow to it, I think, and 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 that works well. Um, yeah, overall, I think this is a very competent vehicle. It's an interesting choice. They're trying to move 
to a younger market, although younger won't be hard considering the average purchase age is like 64. 64. Right, so. When I'm 64, the Beatles. Yes, exactly. Um, this does appeal to an older demographic. They're trying to make this sportier to appeal to a younger group, and, and by younger, like late 40s, early 50s. I think it's sort of self-defeating to try and make this sporty. I think they should just be honest in what it is, and that's a old-school, full-size luxury vehicle, right? And especially uh, when it comes to the grille at the front of the vehicle, they have two different yep. ones. So they have a more classical, uh, luxury kind. Mm -hmm. Anyways, we have to tell that now it's only one piece. So not, not two different sections. Yep. It's only one picture, one section that fades into the other one. But they have two different de designs. They have the more a horizontal bars design, and they have another one that is more sporty, as you were mentioning, the sporty side of a car that is divided in three sections, one vertical in the center and two on the sides. And I think this grill would appeal a little more to the younger uh, audience. Yeah, uh, because it has a, a little more of a sporty taste. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, it's, an interesting, it's an interesting take. We'll see how it works. Um, overall, like we said, good. Um, oh, a couple other things to mention. LED headlights, which mm. are nice. Uh, there is, again, on the higher level trims, uh, driving lights that move with the uh, with the steering wheel once it passes a 25-degree uh, angle on the steering wheel. So that should be really nice at night. We're driving during the day, so I can't speak to that. Uh, follow through the, the, the turn signals. Remind you of uh, Audi, where they kind of do yeah, one it, of these. Yeah. It's uh, a sequential or kind of animated. Uh, yep. Yeah. And um, a 1200 watt, uh, no, yeah, 1200 watt, 14 speaker JBL audio, and uh, with a 10 inch subwoofer. We will include some of that in this video, and then we'll do a separate video, which you can hear the full uh, demo for for what that sounds like. So interesting. Like I said, interesting. I hate to keep repeating myself, but it is. It's an interesting vehicle. As I get older, I can appreciate these a little bit more than maybe I could 10 years ago. But given the trend towards SUVs and crossovers, I think this segment's going away. I do applaud Toyota for sticking to it. Let's see how long they stick to it. So if you like what you saw here, give us a thumbs up, uh, like, share, subscribe, and we'll see you next time on rumblestrip.net and 10 Minute Test Drive.